Hello, theater fans! For those of you that don't know me, I'm Sean. I'm one of Central Park Players' resident prop tart and set painters. For those of you that don't know me, I'm sorry, it's a real treat, honest. Today, I am going to start off a series called Props for the Poor. Can you see that? Or Ain't nobody trying to have filet mignon taste on a hot dog budget up in here. So, we're going to start with something simple today. We're going to do paper aging the easy and cheap way. Why? Because I'm cheap. You see what I did here? I used both sides because I'm cheap. So, we're going to start with a simple paper aging technique that I learned for, you know what, I can't even remember what show it is. But anyways. Tea. Tea is great, and these little spray bottles are wonderful. Dollar Tree, a buck, can't go wrong. Hundred bags for a dollar at Dollar Tree, can't go wrong. So, what I did here is I printed out this little note, and I've hit it probably about three times with tea. Can you see that? There you go. And what I've got is probably, I'm going to want to say I used about three bags and I filled up the bottle. The more you use, the darker it's going to get. And I like it dark. So where you want to start is I have my little notes here that I've printed out on the computer, all, you know, scripty and Victorian. So you want to crinkle it up. And what I like to do is I like to crinkle it probably about three or four times until you get something about as crepey as Great Aunt Betty's neck skin. All right, so we've got that here, and then we're gonna wanna smooth it out as much as we can get it, and then we're gonna wanna hit it with the T. Now, you're gonna wanna do it on something that it's not gonna stick to, because believe me, it's gonna stick once it gets wet. So, we're gonna spray it down. Hit both sides, and there we go. We're gonna have it, and, and even if it's ripped, that's great. It's gonna look all old and, and you know, like it's been around for a while. So we're gonna wanna put that somewhere, even if you got a fan blowing on it so it can dry overnight. And then if you don't like the consistency, feel free to hit it again. I've hit mine about three times, and I still wasn't completely satisfied. So I thought, well, what's gonna be a little bit darker that I can spray on here? So I tried coffee. Now this is just one cup of coffee in here, but it seemed to do the trick. Look at how dark that is. There you go. So it's all gonna depend on how aged you want something and how dark that you're gonna want it. It's personal preference, really. I did this newspaper. This is tea and coffee mixed. I wanted to see what would work better, and, and honestly, I like how aged this is. So it's kind of up to you, the, the darkness that you want. And while I've got you here, I'm gonna read you a fun facts about paper from 1870s to 1890s. So, here we go. <clears throat> For personal correspondence from 1870 to 1890, note paper was used. One very popular size was the commercial note, which was about five inches by eight inches. This size was used for longer letters and by men for most of their letter writing. Men also used the larger pocket note size of five and three quarters by nine inch. Shorter, more casual notes, presumably favored by women, were written on a smaller sheet called the octavo, seven and a half by four and a half inches. An even smaller paper size called the billet was six and an eighth by four inches as was used for invitations and responding to invitations. Well, we've certainly learned to utilize space a little bit better this century, haven't we? And that about concludes today's lesson. Stay tuned for volume two of, what are we calling this thing? <laughs> Props for the poor, or ain't nobody trying to have filet mignon taste on a hot dog budget up in here. And I'll drink to that. Mm. Oh, who drinks this stuff? It's like prune juice filtered through a sweat sock. Ugh. Anyways, see you next time. <laughs>